Hey everybody, Day Trader Rockstar here. And a fast, this is the beginning of the HPS watch list, but I want to get this little stock out before it closes. So maybe you might want to take a look at it and maybe take advantage of it. It's NXPI Semiconductors. Now I've been talking about it a lot on the show lately. We've been starting to pick up a position going into the G20. And the reason is Trump, I mean, <laughs> Trump, Trump in China. Trump in China means a chump. I apologize for that. Donald, uh, our President Donald Trump and um, President uh, Xi of China will be discussing, of course, their trade deals, uh, and the tariffs and everything. And it's all eyes are on that. And, you know, there's going to be another video that goes out with this with the members really discussing the market conditions leading up to this. I, I did this before. Um, and it, everything is leading up to this this weekend. So what comes of this weekend out of those trade talks, if anything comes out, can move the market um, in either direction, really, really, either directions. But let's concentrate on the potential for NXPI to get a pop. Now, we know that the, the markets, well, let's go out on this one to the daily. Um, here we had NXPI back here in February, March area. Um, Qualcomm came in with a 40-something billion dollar offer to take them it was about 126 dollars a share popped up everything was going good but china um did not give approval and i was like all right whatever i didn't really start to pay attention to it until down here and looking at because i was always a big um you know we used to trade this back in 2017 a lot now when we look back at it and how it got hit i have to go back and revisit everything and it was basically china um, squashed it because, and I had to look this up today, if I could bring up some of those uh, articles here, if I could bring up some of the articles, um, um, just to kind of show you some of the things, let me get to the good part here, back in April, company set the deadline for July 25th, they approved, still pinned, and Qualcomm came out. But the reason that China has a big stake in this, or at least makes that makes that call, is because most of the sales are made in China from um, from uh, NXPI semiconductors. All right, forty percent of the NXPI's two thousand and seventy comes from the country, so I guess they get to play a part on that um, deal. Again, got uh, got nixed, and it's been pulling back for the you know rest of the year, and this is where we let, leave leave off right now. At the time of this writing, it, this was trading around a hundred dollar mark, uh, which is about fifteen times the expected earnings of the next twelve months, which is way under the its peers. Now, it makes sense because you know this is what's going on. There's no, you know, apparently no future <laughs> in a takeover on this, but they do own a lot of patents on this technology. I think they own up to the nine thousand patents on the technology. Um, are there other potential deals out there? Logic of te uh, teaming up with NXPI's automotive and industri industrial ex expertise with, auto auto, uh, with mobile specials hasn't disappeared. Being able to package chipsets and use of other distribution distribution channels would be an advantage as the Internet of Things develops. Qualcomm estimates the synergies would be w w would reach 500 million within two years. Um, Broadcom. Who tried to buy Qualcomm doesn't appear to be uh, to be a big automotive fan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so that that got uh, knocked down, and we, we know why now. But now we have a uh, a meeting between Trump, President uh, G, in uh, Argentina, and dealing with the trade deals. And my guess is, if any positive developments come out of the trade deal, this would shine. A bright light on NXPI, uh, the valuation, and everything. So I'm buying into this consolidation. It's not a sure thing, of course. If the, if news comes out, um, you know, we don't get any kind of trade deal. Well, this one's probably still stuck in the sand. But uh, you know, I, I picked up these options going out to 2016. I picked up the 90s. Uh, excuse me, uh, I have a cold today, and I'm, my mind apparently has a cold. <laughs> Two, I have the options on this going out to January, January um, 19, and those are the 90 calls. I picked them up at 152, $1.52 each. Tradeometer, why I'm overbought. So, very interesting setup. I think we have a possible big winner here. It's actually, um, it's holding a nice consolidation. 
The market has been, you know, very volatile, but considering everything, this has been going sideways. And that's also a good sign of relative strength. The five minute chart is coming back strong. And the other thing is I wanted to get out today here early. Another reason why I like it here is that 60 minute time frame. If you're just getting into this and you want to just have the wind in your sail, every time that 60 minute has rolled back down, we've had a nice bounce. And it bounces a significant bounce. I mean, we went from 80 to 85 or close to it. Three to four point moves on that 60 minute rotation. And here we are back oversold on the 60. And here we go. Once again, we start moving back up. So we have a couple things going for us. Right now it's trading a little bit uh, oh, it's a lower on the day, but it's moving back up. And I wouldn't be surprised to get back up there. And um, going into next week, this is what I'm holding. So I want to get this out to you real fast. Maybe take advantage of it. Again, I like I got the uh, January 90 calls. Um, currently, they are NXPI. They're a dollar forty to a dollar sixty-seven, so about a dollar fifty. They're right in that range where I picked them up. I definitely see, uh, you know, there's a potential here, a potential for a nice trade. So I want to get this out for you. Um, see if you wanted to act on that. And then I want to continue on with the HPS watch list, which is our watch list that goes out to members of day trading radio. Uh, those are the high probability setups. We did a lot of, uh, you know, picking up of, uh, some shares in that recent pullback and they're all pushing higher. So just to kind of give you another, another one that I like, well, we're about, just about ready to take profits on it was the IBM. And I mean, this is a, what we call an HPS lower trend line. We tend to break above that trend line. This this underlying trend line is so good to trade off of. Even if you break down through it, that integrity of the trend line always remains. So you could always look for a trade up to it. And once we get back above it, we're going to probably hold and start moving up. That's why I'm not selling it yet. And same thing here. A lot of stocks showing up like that. JP Morgan, same thing. One of my favorites down off of this lower trend line. And the rising trend line, which we kind of chopped around, now we're holding it and we're trying to break out um, our target here, 112 to 114 area. And uh, we're getting closer to that. Uh, but I want to have a whole list for you coming out um, after the market for the uh, for the members. So let me get this out to everyone. Hope you uh, make some money on this and I'll see you in the uh, I'll see you in the markets.